Hi again. Following on from the last two videos where I went through key commands and macros, I had a few comments regarding difficulties with the logical editor and how to get them to work. Uh, apparently I went through that too fast and I should explain it in a little bit more detail. So let's start simple with a blank project. I will first show you how to create a couple project logical editor presets and then also a couple MIDI logical editor presets. For the first one, let's create a folder, first of all, that we're going to use as the, the source, if you like, for the thing that will change. Let's just call it test one. So we have our new folder created here. I want to do two things on this. I want to create a preset that will change the color of this, and then a second one to hide this folder. So this is a project related function, if you like, or the way I think about it. It's not a MIDI. So as I said in the previous video, there are two. There's a project logical editor and a MIDI logical editor. MIDI, I think, is quite obvious. So essentially, that anything that isn't a MIDI, it will most likely be a project logical editor function. So to create that, we go into project logical editor, and then we bring up this window here. Let's just delete these which we go down to this uh, minus symbol here, or minus button, click that, and then we click this one. We have a brand new logical editor preset. So there are various ways to go about this. We have all these different options. We have a media type, a container type. Media is something like an audio track or a MIDI track. Container is a folder. So that is looking promising. Container is folder. So we could think about that option. However, if we scroll down further, we get to something called a property. Now we can do a property is muted or selected, hidden, etc., disabled, loads of different things. But in this case, we are on the track, we have selected it. So property is selected. I hinted before about a container type. That is where you would select things in bulk and you weren't necessarily on that track. But in this case, we have highlighted the track and the workflow, you need to really think about the workflow first before going into this. The process will be that you create the track and then while you have it selected, you will then change the color. In that case, as I said, we have selected the track. That's the first part, that's the first section. What are we looking to change? What's the object that we're trying to change? And the second part is the change that we intend to make to the selected object. Now the number of changes that we can make are numerous. So there aren't many options here in the initial action target, but then each one of them has another 10 or so. So you can scroll down this list for days trying to find different ones. And frankly, the nerd in me, it's quite a lot of fun to go in and look at the different functions and streamline the workflow. In this case, it's actually quite clear it's in the first menu it's set color so here set color set to fixed value and in the first window here you select what color let's go for this particular green here which is 59 and then if we do apply you will see this test one folder change color there we go I should also point out that when I initially opened this window, we had the option of doing container type. 
and we were strictly looking at a folder at that point. But I don't want this color to apply to just folders. I want this to apply to whatever track, or whatever type of track is selected. So if I go add instrument track, I also want this color change to apply to instrument track. So I can go apply, and there you go, it applies again. If I had chosen container up the top, then I would have had to have selected, so container, I could only select folder, but I want this to apply to everything. So container type wasn't an option. So we have this set up now. Every time I do apply, it is changing this color. I can change this to something else. Let's go back to orange. There we go, that's changing. Same here. Let's save this. Test one color change. That is the first function done. Let's just move this into this folder. We can delete this, delete that because we've saved it. Now we're creating the second one. The second one, we are going to close this folder. Now, again, if we think about the, the project workflow, when we have 100 tracks split out, and I'm not focusing on whatever is in test one folder, I'm focusing on kick and bass, for example, I want to be able to hide this folder quickly. So I'm not necessarily going to be selecting it. I will be down selecting kick and bass, not test one. So in that case, we don't want before we had property is, is selected. We don't want that. We want to be able to hide this folder regardless of where we are in the project. So in that case, we need to do name. We need to find it by name. I think it's important to point out at this point, this will find and perform an action on everything that is called test one. So just make sure for this to work that you only have one track called test one. What I usually do is I have percussion folder or test one folder, for example. Then you know that you'd only ever have that single track called that. So now we are selecting this folder and then we need to perform the action. So what do we want to do with this? We want to hide this. So we have position. No, we don't want to move it. We don't want to change the length. We don't want to rename. We don't want to set color. It must be an operation. If we go into folder, because we're looking at a folder. So in this case, we have open, close, and toggle. We want to be able to go both ways. So if we've already closed it, we want to open it, and vice versa. So that is toggle. And if we apply, you will see test one, open and close. Every time I press this button. There we go. Now to further prove that, let's add just a random track, it doesn't matter. So just a random MIDI track. Now I have selected this track, I am currently selecting MIDI. But if I do apply, it still minimizes test one. So let's save this. Let's call this test one hide. And there we go. We have created those two logical presets now. Now we want to assign a key command to that because we don't want to go into project logical editor and press that button each time. That's just a bit of a faff. So to do that, we go into edit 
key commands. We go to process project logical editor, and then we find the ones we just created, which are test one color change and test one hide. Let's do shift one, assign for that one. It's currently used for uh, the transport to marker one. I want to keep that, but let's just assign it for now and I'll change it back. And then test one hide, let's do shift two. Again, that will be taken, but let's just assign it now. So now we have key commands for those. So let's do okay. Now I can select MIDI. I'm not selecting test one is the point. So I'm on one. So now that we've created those, let's just test those. So shift one was to change color. Well, let's just change it to something else first so we can prove that it works. There we go. Random, all random colors. There we go. And we should see this go to the orange that we created before. Shift one, boom. Shift one, boom. Shift one, there we go. The second one was to show and hide or collapse the, the test one folder, which we put to shift two. So shift two, there we go. That is being open and closed at will, despite not having selected it. We are on MIDI and it still opens and closes. Now let's look at the MIDI logical editor. This one is quite particular in that if you don't have an active MIDI part selected, the logical editor option here is grayed out. So quite frustrating. So make sure you create a active MIDI part. Shift S to repeat 15 times as per the previous video. Now, if we go to MIDI logical editor, you can see that it's now active or available. Let's clear those. So now we have a new blank template to work with. In this one, we want to randomize note length and velocity. So let's, again, let's think about what we're trying to achieve. The top is the, is the what. What are we trying to affect? And the bottom is how we are trying, how, how we are going to affect it. So let's have a look. We have position, length, value, all these various options here. In this scenario, we want to look at the note information. So that's not position, it's not length, not value, etc. It is in type. And then we can see here, we have these options for type. In this case, it's note. I think one thing just to point out, it's not immediately clear where things fall when you open this menu up. So it's very much a case of trial and error. You just go through these menus until you find out where things are stored. In my case, I just know from experience that it's under, under type. So once we have selected the note, we want to apply the change. So let's have a look at the options for how we can affect it. We've got position, length, value, etc. In this case, length seems like an obvious one because we're trying to affect note length. And then the ways that we can affect that are we can add, subtract. In this case, we want to randomize the note length. And these are the ranges, or this is the range in which we can apply that randomization. So we can start at zero and go to the upper limit. So let's choose the maximum of 127 
and then we can choose 10 for the lower. So it's not always a zero. So the next thing we want to do is apply randomization to the velocity. So add another row and then have a look for velocity and we don't see it. That's because in Cubase, velocity is value two. Why? I have no idea. It just is. So value two, we want to do the same. Random values between, in this case, let's do the full range, 0 to 127. The reason for that is that in the next step, I will assign velocity in the synth so that it plays the full range of randomization in this, in this parameter here, in this range. Let's open this up and take a look down the bottom here at these notes and we can do apply and then you will see, hopefully, that this is fully randomizing. Amazing. Success. Let's save this one. Test one randomization. There we go. So the next step is to assign a key command to that. So edit key commands. In this case, unlike the project logical editor, this one is in the project process logical preset up here. So let's go and find it. Test one randomization. Let's do this one, shift three, assign, okay. Now, if I do shift three, you can see that there's no need to press the button as you saw before. This is randomizing with this key command. So if I bring up the preset here, I have velocity assigned to filter. It's not the best patch in the world, but it's merely for demonstration purposes. Let's play this back. L, as you saw in the first video. And let's do shift three and we'll see this randomized and the pattern change. So there you go. Project logical editors and MIDI logical editors in Cubase. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.